Are you sure? No, just just do it quick. No. What do you mean? Yeah. It's working. Yours isn't working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's a Grinch. Like, I know. Just join in. Just join in. Why, why would I give you that satisfaction? I'm not going to give you that. It's not our yeah, satisfaction. Just make sure it's working. Yeah. Are we recording, MJ? Oh, I hope we are. Yeah, we are. Yeah, great. Well, uh, you've been a rabble today, so don't you speak. Yeah, your, your hair is a bit. He's all over the shop. It's a bit frazzled. There's some, there's yeah, you left, left his rundown, left, left his phone, phone. What, lost his wallet. Hey. What? That doesn't need to be mentioned. Well, it's true. <laughs> why would you say that? Is that not no, what's wrong with that? Why are you so annoyed about why that? Why is that so? Anyway, why are you being a Grinch about that? You can't talk about being not the Grinch. Anyway, let's move on. Well, no one's the Grinch this week because we're giving away. Finally, we're giving away those Guernseys. Well, the opposite from of the Grinch. 13. The opposite. We're, we're, we're giving Father yeah. Christmas. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're the 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 givers of Christmas rather than the <laughs> Grinch, and that will be happening uh, a bit later on, about halfway through the pod. Yep. If you've entered yeah. that competition, huge. We'll be revealing the winners, which is great. So we'll kick off with this or that. This or that. Um, MJ was a bit slow there, wasn't he? <laughs> so, Jeez, you're in one of those movies. Wow. Right? No, did you not notice that? <laughs> it wasn't his quickest. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, MJ just says he edits it, so he cuts out all those yeah. silences. Do we like that? Craft. <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> it makes a more professional product. This or that. Um, this week is Xylem X Y L E M, L E M, L E M. Yep. Oh. Xylem. Is it the inner core of a carrot, or the key ingredient in reflux medication? Wow. Oh. All right, I'm, I'm going like, the medication. I'm going the carrot. And yet again, Rollo is right. Oh, it's a pure guess. Like, that's a huge guess. I just feel like if you had to make one up, you would say, oh, that sounds like reflux. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> no, anyway, let's get into it because it was a, a a very, very busy weekend of footy and there was a lot of, a roller coaster of emotions, I imagine, for Carlton supporters, let alone the players and the people that are inside the four walls. So we'll start yeah. with Carlton. Uh, and Debbie had a question that's good to kick us off. This is Debbie from Glen Iris. Where were you wat all watching the Frio and Port Adelaide match? And were you watching it as a, together as a team or privately? Go Blues. Yeah, thanks, Debbie. We, um, uh, we all went back to the club and watched it together. So had like a bit of a function there and some of the families and, and staff and players and everyone were there. So, yeah, it was... It was a very strange six hours, especially for not when you weren't playing. Um, yeah. Probably like the, everyone was obviously really flat after our result. And then um, it was quite somber for a while. But then in the last quarter when, when Frio, sorry, when Port Adelaide kind of hit the front and were looking quite strong, it was, yeah, it was, it was very unique it, to cheer home another side to make finals. It was quite, quite a strange feeling. But um, yeah, it was, it was cool to have everyone there. It was quite a unique moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Christian had a question about that experience, actually. Yep. We'll hear from Christian. Hey, boys. It's Christian again here from Essendon. A um, question for you, Harry. Um, obviously, it was a massive um, weekend of footy up until that last game. Um, did you ever think in your career you'd be praying for Port Adelaide to win? <laughs> Please don't make it a habit. Oh, I can't stand <laughs> them. But, um, yeah, enjoy. Cheers. <laughs> yes. It's pretty spot on. Uh, you wouldn't, as I said, you wouldn't really think about barracking for another team for your yeah. for your kind of spot in the finals. But it was a bit like that. So yeah, I mean, ideally, I think we spoke during the week. We, we loved it. That was the fate was in our hands, and a perfect world. You're not relying on anyone else. But um, yeah, the way that the season panned out and the way fate um had it happen was that yeah we, we all became Port fans for two hours, and it yeah. was um as I said, very strange to cheer home another team. But yeah. Super glad that we um we get a chance in September and now anything can happen. It's a new season, so because uh. I'm sure the supporters were watching. It was like you were literally Port Adelaide supporters. It, it yeah. meant just as much to you that they won as Carlton winning yeah. the game before. <laughs> so are you like suddenly a huge Connor Rosie fan? Or was, it, was it like was it really weird? Well, we're saying it was. It would have been weird for the everyone at Freo would have been watching our game and then yeah, when Freo hit, exactly. the, hit the front last. Uh, sorry, when Saints hit the front with yeah. 10 seconds left, then 
all of a sudden their season was alive and then so that they would have been kind of doing the opposite for us mm. and then mm. yeah the roles reversed so yeah it was very strange it was funny to see how some people just couldn't watch it and didn't want to watch it and was just trying to distract themselves and like just, players yeah and stuff and and others were just glued to it um so yeah it was a very strange couple of hours but i guess a cool experience now that we've got the result our way i never get that not being able to watch uh, like I, I i can't stand not watching you yeah. can't change the result so yeah just, i think you're riding the highs and lows way too much in every situation in those games so yeah. yeah i can understand why guys wouldn't watch it yeah yeah uh, It'd be just so draining. It would have been so draining. Oh, it would have been exhausting. Having to, and two games of footy that be, being that invested in. Yeah. Um, who were some of the biggest barrackers and who were some of the I can't watch teammates? Can't specifically remember who was. I don't think anyone was like up on the table cheering. Maybe a couple of the staff, <laughs> but um, I think most of the boys were watching. But a couple of the boys kind of because they did some recovery and came in late. So I think like Cripper and a few of the boys were rather not watch it and then kind of came up late when we're looking um looking like we're going to win so i think everyone's a little bit different but yeah it was, um yeah it was a big sigh of relief and i guess it was still, it was still a cool moment once once that siren went and everyone's like okay we're, we're yeah. playing finals let's go kind of reset kind of thing yeah so yeah a big it was very exhausting there's a obviously not not having to play but um just from riding every every contest basically yeah for two games of footy it was um it was very tough so I guess that's what the fans go through most weeks, but it was, um, yeah, I'm glad Sunday was over and we got the result and <laughs> you got out of it. relax for a bit and then um, reset and yeah, regroup for a big September, hopefully. Yeah. Well, focusing back on the Saints game because you were underdogs going into that game. Of course, your injury list is well publicized and so many key players, including yourself, that weren't playing against the Saints who were in very good form leading into this game as well. The last sort of six, eight weeks has been pretty impressive. So uh, Riley had a question regarding the Young Blues. Hey, it's Riley from Cannons Creek. I had a question for Harry. How proud of you are of the younger boys that had to step up to such a huge occasion the last two weeks and what can we expect from them in the coming years? Thanks. Go Blues. Yeah, good question, mate. Um, I think it's spot on. Obviously, we were, as you said, we've had quite a few injuries and it's been, um, yeah, the flip side of that is we've got some opportunity for a lot of the young boys to come in and, and play a role. And yeah, I think they've been awesome. Um, youth and kind of those young boys, they bring a lot of energy and a lot of excitement mm. and um, it definitely helps helps the group as, as much as it helps the crowd and like builds yeah. the buzz as well. So yeah, I, I, I said, sat here and said it last week as well, but some of the boys did their role really well and um, yeah, they got definitely bright futures in the, in the blue. So um, yeah, I think going forward in, in, into September and finals, it's more of a squad mentality and next man up. So it doesn't matter necessarily who the player is, but um, we're really confident that anyone can come in and get that role done. And um, yeah, the belief that kind of grows within the group is really strong. So yeah, mm. um, yeah, that, and that was as much as like a finals game as, as you'd feel. So those that experience for a lot of those young boys is um, is fantastic and they did really well. So it was um, as much as it was hard to watch, but some of those boys had huge moments, which was great. Yeah. Uh, and then it's always a big topic heading into finals, uh, especially given the bias. So you've got so many players that have a bit of runway to recover in time to play finals, but the selection table, I imagine, in the next week and a bit is going to be so interesting down at Carlton. So here is a montage of people asking questions about both your injury and the injuries of some of your teammates, Harry. Hi guys, myself and Karim Downs. Hi, I'm Alita. And I'm Serena and we are from Doncaster. My name's Riley, I'm from Caroline Springs. Hey Ben and Harry, it's Lauren from Essendon. Hey Harry, it's Alicia from Chanside Park here. Just wondering how many players will get back for the Brizzy game. Hopefully you're one of them. My question is for Harry. Just want to see how the injury is going. Harry, how's the quad? Just wondering if Harry and Charlie will be back for the first week of the finals against Lions. Jeez, it'd be nice to be able to pick from a full list for our game against Brisbane. How are you and Tom DeConning and all the other injured players in our team <laughs> progressing to play finals by next week? Potentially the return of yourself, Charlie, TDK and maybe even Doc. Um, I've got a question for Harry. Are you playing against <laughs> Brisbane? <laughs> Yeah, this podcast has just turned into like a inside injury selection <laughs> news. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't know how much you can reveal, but how are you feeling today? Yeah, on the Monday. Yeah, I'm feeling really good. Um, had some 
couple of really good sessions last week and um yeah it was, was pretty close to um probably being available last week so um yeah personally feeling really good and obviously there's two weeks of training to get through and mm. a couple of things to tick off still but um yeah i feel really good so um we'll see how it all plays out but um all tracking well and i think that buy yeah it comes at a really good time for the for the group and just a chance to get a bit of work in for the guys that um haven't been available and then a bit of a reset and recharge for those guys that have played the whole year so it's um i think if if the season the length of the season keeps on going like this like that that yeah. pre finals buy is crucial because it, it just sure. it adds to the product of the game like you want the best players playing mm. and feeling good so i reckon um yeah it's um it's coming to a good time for the group definitely and but as i said before whoever's available um it's full confidence that they can come in and get the job done so it's um yeah it's a really exciting time are you able to shed any light on Doherty, de conning uh kerno chira uh zach williams are you, do, are you going to give anything away in terms of how they all oh, look? I'm not going to comment on in, individuals because I don't think that's probably it's great way to go about it. But um, yeah, because obviously they've got their own kind of things to tick off and their preparation as well. But um, yeah, I think always understanding was that if we can get to finals, we'll get definitely get a few more available. So um, yeah, everyone's tracking well. It's going to be um, yeah, a big couple of weeks, as you said, on the selection table and mm. on the track to get make sure everyone's feeling good and prime. But um, yeah, I feel like we'll be in a pretty good spot. Um, might be better for Ben to try and answer this because it's it's a hard one with so many players. Say they've got six senior players that are available full selection. How much do you think team harmony um, heading into a final series with a bye, do you want to make wholesale changes given they're such important players in the team? Is it a no-brainer or no, is there... I, th- I think it's a no-brainer. I mean, if, if you had someone come up and, and say, can you get... What, what five or six of your your best twelve players available? Yeah, um, I think it's a no brainer. Um, and obviously, what they probably don't realise, and Harry's probably going through this now, that like, although yeah, it sucks not being out there. Your body would have um, regenerated itself in a few different ways mm. in the in the last two, three, four weeks. So um, there might even be you know a step ahead and a fraction fresher. Obviously, come um, come next week. So there's an advantage in that as well. So um, I think Harry's point. I think you'd, you'd be confident that no matter who's available um, to, to play a role. But I think you'd ask most players and people that if you've got your six best players, call it, um, available, you'd, you'd want them in. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's hopefully, if you're a Carlton supporter, that that would happen, yeah. Yeah. And Harry, you played opening round at the Gabba. Uh, mm. Very famous win. Probably one of your defining moments of your career so far basically the winning goal huge comeback game against the Lions and then Ben you just played there recently so mm. you probably have the most uh the, the best kind of insight for the weather up there because mm. that was it became it was a night game yeah wasn't we, it? we it talked about it off air uh it was just yeah a seven thirty game but when we when we first got there at what four four thirty whatever mm. it was five o'clock it was lovely it was um yeah nice weather the ground was in immaculate condition um you know just it just felt really really nice to, to play mm. in that time um and then during the game the first half it wasn't too bad but yeah after half time especially the last quarter it was literally like a um a wet weather game so i think for a product um harry mentioned before they they played their prelim um yeah in, in a similar time slot in the afternoon so for a product i think that may have been the, the best option um although it was yeah it was yeah it didn't really impact i think we the played- game too much but I, I think as a product it looks Best was, up there. We played opening round at a night game though, so I remember it was pretty was nice. Was that night or was that like a twilight? No, that was Thursday or Friday night. That was an early March. Oh, it was too, got, yeah. Early March, yeah. There, so I reckon it'd be fine. Yeah. But boy, geez, that game, that it was particularly slippery. the second half, Yeah, it literally looked wet well, weather and well, everyone's jumpers looked wet. Well, the gra- like I think one side of the ground mustn't get as much sun as the other side. So mm. yeah, pre-game, like it was almost slippery already, mm. um, the, the, gra- the side of the ground that didn't get the sun. So... Um, yeah, a mixture of the condensation and then, um, yeah, just a sweat as well. So, yeah, I, I'm sure both teams will, will be fine. But, yeah, ideally maybe an afternoon game. Yeah. So you went a lot of your career without playing finals, Harry, and then you missed the Swans one last year. So you had... Uh, the Melbourne one, yeah. Sorry, you, missed the, you played the Swans, missed the Melbourne one. So this will be your third final in two seasons, which is exciting. I mean, you're in the, you're in the conversation. Mm. Yeah, as I said before, I think... Obviously, the the path to getting there probably wasn't as smooth as we would have liked, and there's, that's a different that's a conversation for you know how we can finish off home and away season better to give ourselves a better chance. But once you're in there, it's a different it's a new season. So um, yeah, I think 
any team that can play their best footy. Footy is all about playing the best footy at the right mm. time and moments. And um, any one of those eight teams have shown that they can beat anyone. So I think it's yeah, it's, it's fun just to be alive this time of year. I know Ben, you'd probably be loved to be playing. A lot of players. Um, it's essentially why you do it. You play for September and you want to you want to win grand finals and playing grand finals and um, yeah, for for the club to be able to get there again and um, give ourselves another chance is really exciting. And um, a lot of us are quite optimistic about what we can do if we can yeah put our best together, which um, hopefully we can. Do you feel it's a different vibe this time compared to last year? Like last year would have been the first time your group had a sort of experience finals. This time you've you've done it. At least you've got some experience. You reckon it's a, a slightly less nerve wracking, or however you want to call it, compared to this time last year. Yeah, it's a good point. I think that's probably anything new. It's like it's new, it's shiny, it's exciting. You're not sure what to expect. Mm. You're a little bit probably naive going into it, but that yeah. can be a blessing as well. Like, but this time around, I think you know what to expect. You know what the game's going to be like. You know, even the smallest things, like you know how the ticketing process works, you know, when you do all this <laughs> yeah. stuff, like it's just, yeah, that's right, it's yeah. all a new, it was all really new last year, but this year it's, there's an element of, oh, this is, it's business as usual. Like we know how to do it last year. So, um, I think that's definitely will play in our favor. Um, and you'd probably rather be, I guess, thinking about it now, we'd rather have had that experience of last year than, than yeah. um, than probably not never playing at all. But, um, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah so mm. should be good. It's a good way to look at it. Blues brothers going up, though, you're going to have the full, yeah, not sure, man. Bay of fans and their kit look pretty good in opening round. Yeah, I hopefully mean, that was cool. They they really they bothered me. But <laughs> are you going to go up, Rollo? <laughs> I am. I'm planning to. Yeah. Who are you going to go for? Yeah, um, I'll be a Harry and Lions fan. <laughs> so yeah, good answer, man. So kick kick seven and lose. That's, <laughs> that's all I ask. No. Uh, and then you were just at the Gabba, Ben, as we just we touched on. Uh, so you you gave yourself quite a quite a bruised eye so it was it was bleeding for like five minutes out on the field yeah yeah what happened there uh i think it was i think it was the first quarter um i was in a contest and uh dyson heppel his his elbow got me um pretty flush and then um yeah it, it bled straight away and the umpire didn't pick up on it i, I, I didn't want to go off obviously so i'm not gonna just run off um and so yeah it was like two or three minutes later and then the umpire picked up on it and then went off and got it um fixed up, put the bandage on and then post game, you don't really have time to do it unless it's really, really serious to put stitches or a staple in during game. So if it's not too bad, they normally just put a little bit of Vaseline or something to stop it bleeding yeah. and then um, get on with it. Glue it up. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> and then post game, the doctor sort of puts a couple of stitches in it and it's a bit of a, a bruise as well. But um, Does that hurt? Does the doc just getting out the sewing kit? I do you get like so, a, a local or anything? I've never had it happen to me in my whole career other than last week. And it's happened twice in two weeks. So I had a couple of stitches in the top of my head and then on the, um, on the, uh, above the eye. So on Saturday night, he took the ones out of my head out and then put the ones, oh, wow. um, in, in my eye. So, um, it's a really strange feeling. It didn't really hurt. They just put like a local in it and then yeah. bang, bang, bang. Uh, yeah. So it's not too bad at all. It's probably not as bad as what you think it is, but yeah. And then to take them out, he literally just plucks them out. It's like you're pulling hair. So, yeah, it was a really interesting um, situation. But, yeah, Hep was a bit apologetic. But I'm like, mate, it's, it's fine. Final game. Pa Jeez, parting gift from Hep. So. Played a belting game too. Well done. Yeah, I was reflecting on it um, yesterday. I, I had a similar experience with um, Zeebs last year when he finished up. And mm. um, even just the ability to play with them sort of down back and actually be really involved in their, their last games is sort of cool um, yeah. to, to, to look back on. So, yeah, Hep was, um, he was massive. Geez, it must be an emotional toll throughout the week, oh, yeah. knowing you, you're finishing up and the extra attention and speaking to people and knowing it's your last hurrah, um, even during the game. You know, you're, you're playing your last first quarter or things like that. It'd be yeah. pretty strange. But um, yeah, he, he carried himself as well as he could have. Um, and that's not to be... Oh, yeah, that's Hep. You know, he's always going to, you know, um, prepare as well as he can to the last minute. So yeah, to, to share a lot of the game with him and be really involved with him is something I'm, I'm really proud of and... Uh, yeah, look back with um, with fond memories. So yeah. obviously we would love to to win for him, but um, yeah, that, that's footy. So he's uh, he's been a tremendous um, influence across yeah my twelve months here, and then obviously from a from a holistic point of view across his yeah fourteen fifteen years. So um, yeah, he's been a, a massive um, yeah figure of our club that um, he'll go down as one of one of the greats. I think. Yeah, well done, Dyson Hevel. Uh, we also had. Noah and Ryan, who got in touch, and they had some contributions regarding the Bombers. <laughs> Hi, this is Noah from Geelong. 
Hey, Ben and Harry. It's uh, Ryan from Harrow, Tasmania. Uh, this is for Harry. How does it feel that Carlton are in the finals now and Essendon, Ben, uh, and Collingwood aren't in the finals? How many goals are you kicking at the Gabba, Big H? And, uh, Ben, how much are the barley flights these days? <laughs> Go Blues. Jeez. <laughs> Just... So they, they can't a bit more, a bit more modesty, guys. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, don't I mean, you That's don't, right, you don't, you don't have to mind. answer it. Unless you know what the barley flights are I, like. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, look, pretty ben cheap, just knew it off a heart. So. <laughs> <laughs> They're on sale. Yeah. <laughs> Put you in touch <laughs> with my guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we were talking about the process of thinking about postseason. Are yeah. you in that? Because you've still it, got mate, It's certainly there. strange. Like, obviously, this time last week or two weeks ago, we were generally a chance to play finals. So you're literally yeah. thinking about and doing everything you can to, to qualify. And then all of a sudden... It's like falling off a cliff. Like it's until the coaches and everything, everyone starts planning for the the next week, and you know we can't make it. And it's it was certainly yeah. an eerie feeling last week. Um, you're still prepping as normal, but it certainly takes a shine off um, what you're trying to 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 get out of the week. Um, albeit wanting to finish on a good note, you just know um, this is your last hurrah. So it's it's strange. It's more post game. I reckon you just feel like this is weird. Like the next time to be able to. Influence the game um, yeah. is March next year, so it's such a long w- way away. Um, I think that's the hardest thing to sort of comprehend. And I think you're, I'm probably at a stage now where you're starting to plan your off season. And um, we had our exit meetings today, and you do a, a medical screening, and you, mm. you speak with the welfare guy. So you do your, you know, 90 minutes your individual sort of meetings with everyone, um, and then we have our like a team meeting tomorrow. So yeah, it's it. Yeah, obviously we've done it a few times now, but it, it, it yeah, it's a, it's a, more of a frustration because every yeah. every year I played, we've sort of finished outside the eight, so it's um, a different feeling than what we would have liked. But you sort of quickly roll in with the punches and and think about what's next. Um, yeah, after yeah, disappointing you, so which sucks. But I think as athletes, we're well tuned to to move on to what's next. So you are quickly, um, you know, trying to jot down your thoughts about the year and um, yeah, speak with your coaches and debrief albeit and that's more of like a holistic approach to the year it's, it's amazing how you go from one week you're, you're watching a bit of vision about something so specific and then you mm. have your, your meeting today where it's a, basically a holistic view of all 24 games yeah, so yeah that's something i've um yeah been interested in like how quickly that that process changes so um yeah today was like a, a, a pretty important day i suppose from an individ- individual point of view yeah and it's funny when you consider um carlton and Fremantle didn't know if their yeah. season was over with 20 yeah. minutes no, it's to amazing. go. In. Yeah. 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 It's such a unique part of our game, isn't it? So, and sport in general. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, um, I'm sure it's been a pretty hectic 24 hours for a lot of people, a lot of clubs. And, um, yeah, you sort of move it into your next phase of, of your year, which is, um, disappointing, but yeah, I think once you accept that and mm. you get into solution mode, um, you start to feel a bit better and, and trying to get to work. So, yeah. Um, and the All Australian squad will be coming out. Uh, tonight in real time, we we're recording okay. on Monday night. Uh, you have been an All Australian, Harry, back in your Coleman year, I assume, twenty twenty one. Yeah. Yep. Uh, have you been in the squad another time? Uh, Do you know? No. You don't keep track I think of so. it. No. Oh, you you don't know? Or you haven't been? No, I don't think I've been. No. Really? No. Oh, that surprised me. Um, and you're both genuine chances. I would have thought to make the the extended squad this year. What, what, uh, I wouldn't have thought. I think you would have known. I, I don't know. Did that, we were did talking it, about if, if the, the club informed the player or you'd yeah. find out. I don't, I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, I think you'd know. Know. Don't if, you'd know if you're in the team because you have to go on the awards night. Out. Yeah. But I don't know. If, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Wouldn't have thought. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> B- bigger <laughs> bigger fish again. to fry, Rollo. Yeah. yeah, yeah bigger Maybe fish. not for Ben, but. Over um, in Bali. Yeah. Fish to fry. Fish and Bali. Yeah. Fish to Literal fry in Bali. Fry. There is a nice beach on, in Bali where you can, <laughs> you can get some seafood on the beach. Just to go, I'm not going to Bali. <laughs> <laughs> where are you going? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm actually going to Japan. Are you really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Have yeah. you been before? No, I haven't. Japan's so, awesome. Yeah. I, I literally haven't heard someone say a bad word about yeah. Japan. So you love it. It's a People are away. lovely. I think the yen's a good price at the yeah. moment. Which Apparently, is... it's um, <laughs> if you're like really tall, they just they can't fathom like tall people there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because obviously we're giants and um, their their population's a bit smaller now. So you'll get stopped for a photo. 100%. Yeah, apparently it's crazy. So yeah. um, that'd be interesting. It's a couple of Essendon fans stopping. <laughs> a photo. couple of bombers fans. Yeah, I think <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of bombers over there at this time of year. Yep. Uh, all right, competition yeah, time. Let's do it. This let's do fun. it. This is let's fun. All right, yeah. so we're giving oh, yeah. away the match worn Guernseys. Uh, so the Carlton one for a Carlton fan. I yeah, assume. Yeah, go first. All right. Yeah. So you've got yeah. the. So well, there's a few. There's some really obviously. Just read out a few. Yep. Yeah, I was going to. 
<laughs> Pino? I'm going to leave it in your hand. Don't, don't call me that. But anyway, yep. Yeah, so we obviously had, we had lots and lots of entries. So thank you so much for everyone that played along each week and entered. Yep. Um, and we got them to kind of reveal their favorite footy or Carlton memory in this case. Yep. So some honorable mentions. We had um, Walks took in, taking undoubtedly until this year mark of the century. Um, <laughs> yep. So I think Ben contributed to the current winner of that in 2011. Um, we had some good mentions around the Melbourne win last year. So in 2023, there's a few of those ones. But the winner um, oh. is, because this was my favorite Carlton memory pre coming to the club. Right. Okay. So That's this cool. is why it resonated with me. So it was, um, the winner is Cassandra. Oh. So what on Cassandra? And it was when Carlton made the um, top eight. And they beat Richmond after finishing ninth. And yeah. I remember that game really clearly watching it. And um, there was like 95,000 at the G. I think it was a Sunday afternoon. It's and it was, just, it was just the pinnacle. It was a beautiful, like pure football game. Um, 2013. Juddy, Judd went nuts. Yeah. yeah. It, was just, it was a really cool day. And I wasn't a Carlton fan then. So um, that is the winner. So thank you so much, Cassandra. You'll get my jumper. Nice work, Cassandra. Well done, Cassandra. So That's congratulations. Awesome. Yeah, well done, Harry. Um, so a few from the Essendon side. Dustin Fletcher's 400th game is a yeah. is a honourable mention. Um, obviously, you have a bit to do with Fletch still. He floats around the club and um, one of our icons growing up that we love. So that's a shout out. Uh, Sam Dome's uh, winning goal last year in Dreamtime yeah, was huge. another one. Um, David Zaharakis's winner against Collingwood on Anzac Day. Yep. Um, which is yeah, ex- I remember watching that. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, but yeah, the winner, and this is uh, similar to Harry's, it uh, has something to do with me and, and my relationship with someone um, at the club. So the winner is Kendra Daly, and the the reason being Hurls kicking his last goal. And it might not be not it's sort of subtle, but um, an influence Hurls has been um, at the club, and he's done a, a lot for me. So um, a little uh, personal touch there. So Kendra, well done. Um, nice. You'll receive my match one jump up. Beautiful. Well, work, well everybody. done. Well run, guys, as well. That was. Sharp and professional. Thanks, mate. Nice. It's one of the nicest things just, you've said. But everyone's lifted. You know, it's just been a, it's been a great year. That's <laughs> what happens when you don't belittle, belittle us. <laughs> oh, oh God, no, mate. No, nearly no. got it out. Twinners. <laughs> <laughs> no. Twinners and losers. Ben and Harry's. I'm so excited for this. Twinners. Birds often think I'm a tree. And <laughs> losers. Mandarins. I just love him. I'm mandarins at the moment. <laughs> Oh, you're, you're laughing. That is. Just, yeah. <laughs> I found that very funny. Yeah. I can I can kick us off. Um, Twin R this week. So a few boys um, this morning went to. There's a new recovery place in South Melbourne called EQ. I think it's like a wellness center. Oh. And it was. Um, Are you getting paid for this? No, no, not at all. It was just. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're getting, doing it, was, it was beautiful. It was a really nice setup and um, all class. So the boys enjoyed that today. So that was the Twin R. <laughs> Oh, come on. No, that's serious. <laughs> How much was it? Yeah. No, no. Are you trying yeah. to get paid for it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. EQ, I hear it's lovely. No, but it is very nice there. Yeah. Yeah. So, go, um, go to yeah. WWW. <laughs> if EQ. you want to get in touch with them, wellness. you go <laughs> EQ.wells. <laughs> At Instagram. Oh, um, and then Twin Eye. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do a Twin Eye first. No. Um, sure. My Twin is the... Have you been to the Albert Park Hotel? Oh, yeah, it's a ripper. That's unbelievable. Isn't I went there it, for the first Chinese time. Food? Yes, yeah, yeah. It's, it's similar to Oriental Tea House. Yeah. Um, but I reckon. <laughs> also, very good people. Yeah, very good yeah. people. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <There's, there's> a... <laughs> what is this? <laughs> just turned into a plug. Like classified. <laughs> <laughs> also, while you're at it, <laughs> oh, Daniel's Donuts. Daniel's yeah. Donuts, I've heard, is really good for donuts. <laughs> they are very good donuts there. <laughs> um, we had a, we had a feed with a few of the boys there and our partners yesterday. So, yeah. Um, no, that lovely is... food. I'd never been there before. So, that is good. Took me by surprise. Nice, nice. man. Mm. Um, losers. I had, I guess there's kind of a twinner as well because I don't mind them, but that, that storm last night. Oh. We were driving out of Marvel and it was like obviously very flat after the loss and yeah. we drove out and it was just absolutely bucketing down, thunder, lightning everywhere. And um, that kind of contributed to the mood for the next hour until we were happy. Yeah. Again. But that was a crazy it storm. Was, there was heavy hail out no, in I can't, uh, I can't, or Bendigo. Was... I can't um, remember a storm like that in a while. No. Not in Melbourne. That was Even a, that today, was a, it... it Rained and then like an hour later it was sort of decent again. So yeah, yeah, it was like a tropical storm. Yeah, it's yeah, kind of yeah. Sydney Crazy. or Brisbane. Yep. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot for my losers this week. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've just been praising you. Just, yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't want to make it's just it up. one thing you got to think of every week. It's, a bit, it's your only role in this podcast is just to think yeah. of that, mate. How many times have you not had a twin or a loser? 
I can at least get creative and think no, of something. No, you don't, actually. Spot. You actually don't. So, <laughs> I don't have a lot for a, a loser this week, so maybe getting the stitches Shock. in the eye. Um, just as a general, as you were saying, holistic, uh, I, I'll make my winner how intriguing this final series is going to be now that we've got it set in stone. So, if you... I mean, it's probably easy for Ben to comment, but Sydney and the Giants, qualifying final, uh, Port Adelaide and Geelong. Who are you sort of leaning Where, to? Where's it at? Where's the Sydney game at? That's at the SCG. Right. That, that's in Sydney, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> not funny. Not remotely funny. I'm going to be in Melbourne, mate. Who would you Well, lean? obviously, oh, I'm not even going to bother, man. <laughs> Who would you lean to there? Um, oh, you'd have to give Sydney the, de- the benefit of the doubt, I reckon. Um, Back the minor premium? Yeah, at home, um, maybe just. Um, I feel like, yeah, maybe that the home ground advantage, I'm fascinated to see how that yeah. um, works and, and whether that's a you know sort of real thing this year. Um, we've obviously seen in the past how um, important it is. So, yeah, you think, oh, Port and Geelong, oh, I don't even know. What do you that's think? in oh, Adelaide. Is it? Yeah. I don't know. All, <sighs> it feels like every... Every team, I was going to say every top four team, every single team feels really vulnerable. No one looks completely unbeatable, which is great. Yeah. I think it's so exciting. Yeah. It's going to be really interesting. Yeah, let's say Tom, does Tom Hawkins come back and they, the, the group gets a lift from that? I think he doesn't. I think he's done, isn't he? I think... <sighs> no, I reckon they get him back. Yeah, I'm not sure. Because he'd, he'd take the best the best defender. Like I still think he has a role to play. Yeah. Um, Played a very good final series a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then obviously Brisbane hosting Carlton in an elimination final. Yeah. And then uh, Hawthorne Bulldogs. That'd be a good game. Hawthorne Bulldogs. And that's probably that's a cracker. It's probably the most exciting game of the lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, I mean, I'd, I, yeah. I'd, it, those two games are probably too close to call. Like, I'd, yeah. Yeah. You could go either way. No, it's great. Uh, finally, we'll get to the questions for this week. So start with Dylan. Uh, Dylan from Bendigo. Rolo. Uh, question for you is can you maybe barrack for Carlton this time because you guys had last year and you know I know you didn't get the chocolates but it's our turn finally and Ben just wondering if you're going to pull out your Carlton jumper again to support your brother in the finals cheers great question again I, I didn't have a Carlton jumper last year you went to one of the finals last year are you going to come up to Brisbane come support us no when would you go and support would you go watch a prelim if it was in Adelaide no <laughs> Why would he? He's already in Bali. Yeah. <laughs> in Bali, mate. Just catching fish in Bali. <laughs> maybe. Oh, if it was in Melbourne, maybe. But yeah, not, not flying into state to watch. Did you Bali. go to both finals last year at the G? Oh, you, but you, you played the yeah. second one. Right? I went yeah. to the Melbourne game. Yeah, which was you went a rarity. To the game. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I think we've spoken about it before, but we don't normally go to each other's games. So yeah, you didn't seem too grateful for it either. <laughs> Who's been to more <laughs> games? Is it like four to three? Yeah, it'd be something like that. Something like that. Could be it's many. Just, no. Yeah, it's not. It's not many. <laughs> and it doesn't sound like it's going to get much bigger either. No. That list. Um, no. no, and Dylan, I'm absolutely not. No. There's no I'm way. Going, maybe <laughs> going for Brisbane, I reckon. Yeah. No, I'll be, I'll be going up to the Pineapple Hotel. Putting, Do you reckon you get a ticket? You. I've put, I've, I'm trying to pull my work strings to see... Uh, can Couldn't you get that through uh, your membership or was that... I could, yeah. I, yeah. Don't, want to, I don't want to rely on that. Oh, okay, yeah. And I want other members to, you know... I want to snaffle no, you up. Just a want few. a nicer seat. <laughs> well, I want to be behind the glass. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a hot night. Uh, Jody yeah. from Nara. Hi Ben. Hi Harry. My name is Jody, and I'm from Nara in New South Wales. Oh, nice. I'm a huge Carlton fan. I, I'm sorry, Ben. <laughs> um, <laughs> whenever we head to Victoria for football games, I just love to hear your recommendations for a great cafe to grab a good coffee. Ooh. Thank you. Here we go. Nice, Jody. Yeah. <laughs> Chance for some so, free coffee. Yeah. <laughs> no, so my my local at the moment in, in Middle Park, there are uh, lovely people in there. Jack the Geezer. Can you maybe feed a little bit, please? <laughs> mate, you got all that space. Stretch out there. Look at that. That's just so that selfish, is, mate. Yeah, no, you, it sums you up, man. But can you not go to the angle and do that? No, I'm respectful of other people's <laughs> areas. Anyway. <laughs> um, Roll like you are, Jody, as yeah. I was no, saying. No, I'm on Ben's side there. Um, Bayside local, Jack the Geezer, the lovely people in there. Yep. Um, good coffee, good food. Awesome. And then an old-time favorite um, is Black Gold in Richmond. They're, oh, good one. They're the best. They're, they're awesome. So also lovely people. And um, the chicken sandwich, the toasty sandwich in there is elite. And yep. subs of coffee. So I'd recommend those two for you, Jody. Jack the nice. Geezer. There's um, Mammoth in Turak. Oh, yeah. Um, which is nice. And then Mammoth, one up. Yep. What? Hmm? Mammoth, yep. Yeah. And then uh, Yuka, which is my local above... Yeah, a couple hundred meters above where we live, so 
we're up from where we live. So yeah, you probably those two. Yeah, nice you man. Okay. Nice. What's yours, Roll? Um, oh, my local journeyman uh, on Chapel Street near the corner of Chapel and High. Just up, up and early. Delta. Did you, have to get, did you have to get up like when you were getting up early for breakfast? Oh, it's not that early. No. Is there anyone's? Would you get a coffee in the morning? Um, no, no, nothing's that early. Jeez. Um, are you aware of any twenty-four hour? There was one in Brisbane. I used Seven to eleven. To. There was yeah. one that was really open at like four, I think. But yeah, no, it's a rare treat. Um, no, we just had plunger coffee. Yeah. You get the beans, Saint Ali, great beans. Yep. Mm. Um, shout out. I'm there yeah, today, actually, Saint Ali. Yeah. Good, good joint. Head too. <laughs> uh, finally, from Zane. Uh, Zane here from Kilsyth South. Harry, can I send you an invoice uh, for my cardiologist uh, <laughs> for the club to reimburse me? Thanks, mate. Cheers. Go mate, uh, Zane, I'm with you, mate. That was yesterday. It was. <laughs> yeah, as I, I've said this, we've said this quite a bit. When you're playing, like you're probably the calmest stakeholder in all of the game because you have some yeah. control over it. But when you have no control and you're just watching it, is tough. Yeah, but that's yeah. sport though. It's yeah, sport. That's, that's why we it. love it. That's yeah. why we love it. We're not I mean, saying it's a bad thing. We're just saying. If you didn't watch and you didn't care, yeah. be, what's the yeah. point? Exactly. Yeah. Got to get your heart rate up. Yeah. That's right. Um, but yeah, I think I think I heard a story last year from a Collingwood supporter that was genuinely going to like ask for reimbursement from the Collingwood Football Club because <laughs> oh they had God. so many close finishes. Like, mate, my heart can't handle it. They're going to kill me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that's awesome. Great questions. Well done, team. Good show. Nice. Yeah. Instagram and TikTok, Rollo. Yes. Head to at Ben and Harry Podcast. Send us to a DM like always. It's been great. So leave us a review if you, if you can as well. Hit, hit the, the bell, bell, which does what, Ben? It informs you when the new episode's out. <laughs> it Rollo. informs you. It informs does you. It does it not? It does. It's an yeah. informant. <laughs> it is. Hello. <laughs> episode. Uh, nice work, team. Yeah, we'll Harry. see you back in next week before the game. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. So, uh, yeah. Best of luck with the recovery this week. Hopefully, we'll see you back up at the Gabba. Do you mean that? seven in a loss. <laughs> Rollo's <laughs> actually been trying to take me out in the studio. Oh, yeah, mostly. He's pushing chairs into me. Wheeled a chair into your neck. And Ben, enjoy Bali. I will buy a banner. I'll see you there. Yeah, I'll see you there. Go boys.